first quick disconnect arm has been installed and it looks like something out of a science fiction film. Hey, welcome back to another big round of updates about SpaceX, Starship and the space industry. So let's waste no time and jump right in. So you just saw it, SpaceX has begun installation of the quick disconnect arms. The first one is already attached to the tower, hopefully the second one will follow soon. Looking at the pipework, it looks like this will be a propellant supplier for the spacecraft. The Starship catching mechanism, fondly described as Mechazilla or robot chopsticks, is rapidly taking shape and I cannot wait to see it fully installed. SpaceX is still unsure as to which the optimal part were for the lifting and catching is. As per Elon, they are thinking about modifying the grid fins to take more load instead of using two pins and you won't believe what Elon Musk just said on Twitter. He hopes to give Mechazilla a first try with Booster 5 which would only be the second orbital launch attempt. Isn't it a bit too soon and risky? Like all the progress made in the past months could be destroyed. Next in the news, to some it may not look like it, but the crew at Starbase has been doing a rapid and steady progress on the heat shield tiles of Starship 20, working on it day and night. Now it's looking more complete with less uncovered surface. They are going as fast as they can. Back at the production site, work continues on Booster 4. It didn't roll out to the launch pad last week, so maybe this is the one. However, I believe the engines still don't have any protection and I am not sure how long that is going to take them. Anyway, as long as the FAA doesn't give permission for launch, I don't see any reason for them to hurry even more. Speaking of regulatory institutions, guess who is meddling in the SpaceX affairs with the FCC, which is the Federal Communications Commission? Yes, you guessed it our friend Bezos, this time through Amazon. Amazon has urged the FCC to deny SpaceX's plan to launch its second generation of Starlink satellites. Amazon claims the plan is too broad and speculative, thus breaking the FCC's rules on applying for satellite deployments. Of course, anyone can see through this charade. The real reason why Jeff Bezos wants to stop Starlink is because Amazon is developing its own satellite internet system called Project Cooper, which still hasn't taken off. Elon Musk didn't hesitate to give his honest opinion on the matter. Turns out Bezos retired in order to pursue a full-time job filing lawsuits against SpaceX, he wrote on Twitter. Speaking of Blue Origin, they conducted a high-altitude flight with their new Shepard rocket, carrying various experiments from NASA, the very institution which they are also taking to court. In one of my previous videos, I told you that NASA's HLS contract with SpaceX was being paused at least until the 1st of November, while well, now another seven days have been added to the calendar since Blue Origin has has literally drowned NASA in documents and files with over 7 gigabytes in data. They have also presented their new project Jarvis, a stainless steel test tank that looks suspiciously similar to SpaceX's Starship, the very same vehicle they deemed extreme complex and high risk. And to finish off with Blue Origin, they have also begun selling a toy version of their new Shepard rocket for $69. This guy has some balls on him. Next in the news, SpaceX successfully launches its Cargo Dragon CRS-23 to the International Space Station on one of their Falcon 9 boosters. The fourth flight for this particular one, which performed a nominal boost back maneuver and masterly landed on a shortfall of Gravitas, SpaceX's newest drone ship. This cargo mission is carrying a multitude of engineering and scientific experiments to the International Space Station. Some of these experiments will evaluate germination techniques in space and even growth of bone tissue under microgravity among others. Another not so successful but nonetheless even more breathtaking launch was the orbital flight attempt made by Astra. During ignition one of the engines failed, leaving the rocket with a weight to thrust ratio of 1 to 1, causing it to hover sideways until enough propellant had been burned for the rocket to lose weight and be able to begin its ascension. By then it was clear that the rocket wouldn't reach orbit, but the engineers let it fly anyway in order to safely clear the island and also gather as much data as possible. The rocket managed to reach an altitude of approximately 50 kilometers before the remaining engines were shut down and the flight terminated. The most fascinating thing is that the rocket managed to stay pointing upwards after it started to tilt to the side. So props to the engineers for saving the launch site as well as the surrounding landscape. Next up in the news, Starhopper celebrated its two-year hop anniversary a couple of days ago. Starbase has gone from almost a barren landscape to a busy spaceport in in the making, just let your imagination fly and try to think what will be possible in another two years. It's just fantastic. Today's awesome picture for this video are these gorgeous arctic hairs. Aren't they pretty? 
Hey, I hope you liked the video. I wish you all a nice and productive week. I will see you with more content about SpaceX and the space industry very soon. Until then, take care. Bye bye.